Hi everyone. Uh, today we will discuss um, the face detector neural network example that was developed as part of a uh, Torch 7 demonstration by Clement Farabe uh, while he was working at NYU and um, together with us, uh, eLab. This uh, uh, face detector is a very simple example of how to uh, create and use a neural network. Uh, the code is quite compact and I think it will give you like a great, a really great example of a demonstration of a neural network running in Torch um, with our software and um, running with basically with Torch 7 and uh, all the infrastructure. So we will. Uh, this is we will analyze the code. This code is basically in Torch Seven demos uh, by Clement. It's called Face Detector. There's a file there called Run.lua that basically is running the main um, the main system, the main uh, Face Detector. So I'm gonna start uh, talking about this, this Face Detector in particular. Okay. So we start by basically uh, loading all the required torch packages, uh, in particular camera and a new neural network extension, and an X, uh, and other like UT, for example, for creating the graphic user interface for this software. Um, there are some arguments that can be passed at, uh, to torch, uh, to run.lua, uh, the main file. Um, you could say, for example, that you wanted to uh, to store the camera into some specific format. You know, to store the files that you capture. You could also use a different network uh, and um, with different path to train network and uh, and so forth. And there's a default default train network that the, the system uses. The system also sets uh, the default tensor type to float, so not the full double 64-bit, um, but just the fir float 32 bits. Um, you can also set the number of threads here to speed up. So if you have multiple cores or multiple processors, you can set this to 4 or 8 if you have 8 processors and so forth. Um, we then notice that there's uh, an inline C routine called blob parser. Uh, this is an inline C routine that, as we will see later, uh, basically um, identifies the location of, of the detection of the face coming from the network. We will take a look at that uh, in a little bit. Let's move forward now to the meat of the example. Uh, notice that this code is fairly self-contained and um, it's quite quite easy to understand. So uh, these are basically um, the main script to load uh, a network. So you can create a network and then sequential, or you, you can load it. This is uh, one of the option network. <coughs> In this case, it's an ASCII file. The network fovea uh, is uh, the size of the input window of the network. In this case, 32 by 32 pixel. And the subsampling is the, the overall subsampling ratio of the network. In this case, the network subsamples the, by uh, this 32 by 32 by 4 before um, coming into a classifier or using the data. Um, of course, uh, both of these two uh, variables could be obtained uh, from uh, loading the torch files in other ways that we can see. Uh, if if available, especially the network subsampling can be obtained easily. Network phobia also as well. We will set up a camera, so the image.camera uh, sets up the camera driver so that you can grab images from um, from the net uh, from from the script, and um, you can process it. You will process the input image from the camera at multiple scales, just like we talked about in uh, um, lecture um, 
by Icicle Dondar explaining how the phase detector works. There are basically uh, multiple scales, so there will be the full scale 0 0.3, 0 0.24, 0 0.4, up to 0 0.1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 scales that uh, get combined together and that's really a good way to be able to detect something that um, it's uh, it's very large on the screen like a large face that is much bigger than 32 by 32 pixels of the that the network can handle so you can um, down sample the different scales um, this uh, for example in, in this scale 0.1 and a face that would be 300 pixel by 300 pixel could be detected at this scale uh, because the network basically squeezes it multiplies that 320 by uh, 0.1 and it gets to the size of the network so you can detect a small face as, as well as a, a very large face on the screen if the face is too small on the other hand so if the face is much smaller than 32 pixels so it's like 5 by 5 or 6 by 6 pixel um, then might not be able the network might not be able to detect it unless it was trained for it and usually convolutional neural network have some trouble if um, uh, learning something if it's much smaller than the input window um, so as we said uh, there there's going to be two extra files here in uh, uh, there that are used by the Rand.lua and the face detector one is the pyramid packer and, and the pyramid and packer so these are two files that uh, generate uh, the pyramid at all the scales and pack them all nicely in one image that can get sent to the to the network and process in one shot. So the packer is basically like a neural network neural network function, an extension of the neural network function that basically takes the uh, the network as a parameter and the scales and packs it, packs it up for, for the network and the unpacker just um, takes the output from the network and unpacks it so that you can uh, basically see it at full resolution as the same way that it's um, you recorded from you can uh, we will set up a graphic user interface uh, if uh, there's no window we create a window with qt um, there's a Gaussian that is initiated to smooth the distribution output of the, the neural nets, as we will see. Um, there's also a profiler to measure time, um, and we have a function. This is the main process function that basically processes all the information. So from here to here, so there's a uh, function process uh, grabs a camera frame. Uh, it transforms it into from RGB to uh, Y, so only the luminance value. Uh, this is sometimes sometimes has been found that neural network work well uh, if you convert RGB to Y. In reality, you're uh, throwing away some information. Uh, if you can train a network with RGB um, or YUV colors, as some people uh, use. Uh, that might be the best so that you can contain also keep the information of color um, in the case of the face uh, um, some experiment proved that it might not be that useful in any case we usually prefer to keep the rgb to keep sort of like a bio inspired seal the network as bio inspired as possible um, so after this frame y is converted to only the luminance values uh, then you take basically uh, the packer and you forward that frame so that you can get a pyramid and all the coordinates on the multiple scales um, coordinates you don't really need them now until you unpack now you send that you use the neural network that we loaded and you forward the pyramid so all these packed views as we saw in the last um, um, in, in the last uh, slides uh, from from ISA. I just wanted to bring up a uh, real quick um, a slide that shows the pyramid so this is the original image um, you then pack a pyramid of one two three four five six scales for example you try to pack them tightly into a larger image um, they could be slightly slightly larger and longer than the original one 
uh, depending on the size of, of, the, of your pyramid. Uh, but then you process this entire pyramid all together. So that's what is done uh, there. Um, so yes, so the network uh, basically processes the entire pyramid in one shot and then you unpack. So once you get the output, you, you, you bring back all the, the detection into the same plane into the same kind of format. Uh, at this point then um, you pass the distribution, so the output of the network are basically uh, similar to probability distribution. You uh, unpack them to um, basically uh, find all the detection of the faces. It could be multiple detection of a face in there. Um, so what you do is um, um, you create a threshold of detection. There's a threshold in the GUI, as we will see. Um, you create a list of raw results. Uh, you take uh, the input distribution, so the output from the, the impact network, and then you convolve it with the with the Gaussian that we've seen up here. Basically, the image Gaussian, so just to remove the small noise in the, in the output of the network, making it smooth. And then you parse it through uh, the online uh, C code. Basically, it's going to find all the different uh, um, instances of a face uh, in the smoothed output of the network uh, using the threshold. And you will then write all the results in the raw results. Uh, and and, set, and uh, it will have a knowledge also of the scale so that it can set a bounding box that is appropriate for uh, different kind of of sizes. So if we go back to um, the um, on inline C code in the parse, what you can see is basically it's, ta it's taking uh, four multiple inputs. So one of them is the, the, the tensor that uh, gets checked by uh, the main uh, torch tensor that uh, is the output of the network. There's a threshold value. Uh, there's a list of objects and then there's a, there's a scale, there's a different scale. So what you do is you go through uh, the values of the, you go through every pixel of the output of the network, you loop over pixels and then you, if the value, if that value of the pixel is above the threshold, so if there's a candidate face, uh, then what you do is you basically uh, record this uh, the x location x coming from this loop the y location and the, the corresponding scale and then you insert that into you insert that into the table um, that you wanted to have a list of so it's the output is going to be this table so the raw results uh, you then clean 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 up the results so that uh, you don't have multiple squares in, in one place uh, and um, you, you set the, the bounding box correctly for each one of these results to have the, the appropriate size. So you have X and Y and then the, the, uh, the width and the height of the bounding box depending on the scales. So you have to divide basically, um, of course, for the X and Y location, you have to uh, figure out uh, you have to multiply by the network subsampling because the output of the the output of the neural network is subsampled version of the input image. So you have to kind of reconstruct where in the input image this was, um, and then uh, you have to divide by the scale also. So you have to bring it back up to the current scale. So this is for x and y, and the same thing for the the width and height. It's just actually the network over so 32 divided by the scales because it was a fixed window. There's also another uh, function display. And basically, all it does is it displays uh, the image plus the pyramid and then overlays the bounding box for each, each detection. All it is is uh, just a QT instruction to, to set up a bounding box on top of the face. Um, and lastly, there's, um, there's a QT timers. You set up the GUI, uh, you you run a loop here, QT connect, you run this loop and you process, display, uh, print the results, process, display, print the results and so forth. And there's a, there's a timer 
that uh, times all these things. Um, so this is basically the code of the neural network as it, it should appear.